person. What does it mean to be a mature person in a Japanese context? We've talked about um, the fact that Japanese people uh, um, locate themselves in a household, and then it's a useful way of thinking about uh, Japanese life uh, by reasoning the household all the way up through the corporation, the nation, and indeed the, the globe. And we've also talked about how the household serves as uchi, or a center of belonging, a powerful center of belonging for Japanese people. So Japanese people are always reckoning themselves in relationship to the household. Now, what does it mean to be a mature person in a Japanese context? Contrast it with the United States. Those of you going through college are in the process of maturing. College is a transitional period between youth or adolescence and adulthood. And you are learning by virtue of leaving home, per, in, indeed if you are, uh, and, and, and moving away, going through this process of becoming autonomous individuals, coherent individual beings. And so you've gone from being some, uh, some incomplete or unformed self to a full or more complete and developed self. It's all about selfhood and the individual. Throw that all away. In a Japanese context, we have a completely different image of what constitutes the maturing process. The two concepts I want to work with to help you understand that are ki and kokoro. Ki is a, is a word referring to a property of all human beings. We are all characterized by energy. Uh, a boundless human energy is inside of all of us. We, uh, we have this vital force capabilities. And indeed, we need to fire that up. We need to release it. We need to encourage it. Uh, we need to find vehicles for its transmission. However, you can't let key on its own. You can't let this energy be uh, unbridled. It somehow has to be managed, which brings us to the second concept, that of kokoro. In order to manage ki, the vehicle for the pathway for managing ki is described in Japanese terms as polishing the kokoro. Kokoro is a word that refers to the heart. But the heart in a Japanese context is very different than the heart in Western context. I mean, let's think about the heart for a minute, and, 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 and indeed, as it relates to some uh, American stereotypes about the Japanese. Uh, Gary Legg reports in his articles, uh, Experiences by American Engineers, that, that suggests the impression that Japanese have no feelings. Uh, remember Hitomi's reaction to her mother dying. She was very stoic. She did not display any overt expressions of grief or loss. Remember um, Mary Mollison's story about the festival in which people were visiting the graves of their ancestors, and the whole family was get together. Was there any hugging? Was there any excitement, enthusiasm? No, there wasn't. There was just a huge bow here and there. Think about the heart in the United States. Um, it occurs every now and again around Valentine's Day. Think about the Valentine's Day meanings of the heart. Um, the heart, I, I said, uh, what does the heart, uh, in class I said, well, what does the heart mean to us? And uh, one student without raising his hand said, aww, aww. In other words, heart in the United States calls attention to emotion. And Valentine's Day is about expressions of emotion, the emotion the emo particularly the emotion of love. Well, in the Japanese case, the heart is not the, uh, to be distinguished from the mind. It is not to be distinguished from the brain. The heart is the seat of both feeling and thought. And one's challenge as a person is to learn how to and pra uh, practice maturing through polishing the heart, through polishing the kokoro. Well, how does this happen? It happens through suffering. One has to suffer. And learning occurs through the uh, disciplined activity of suffering, the disciplined management of suffering. Uh, the anthropologist Durin Kondo, who uh, went to a uh, Japanese school for morality training, 
describes at length and in, in, in graphic detail about, about the process of polishing the Kokoro, even uh, literally. In contrast with Western, uh, Western training and morality, which might begin with some underlying principles, uh, Doreen Kondo, when she arrived, was handed a toothbrush and she was told to polish the floor of this long hallway. Get on this end, get down on her knees, and polish the floor all the way to the other end, which she did. Patiently, systematically, one end to the other, got to the other end, proud of the, f of the work that she had done. Her, her mentor came and looked, congratulated her on having um, done a good job in polishing the floor, and then said, do it again. Go from this end back to the other. The point being that the goal wasn't to polish the floor. The goal was to polish her heart, was to polish the kokoro, was to help her to develop the appropriate levels of discipline uh, that she needs in order to be a full moral person. Learning occurs through repetition. And the, and the learning that occurs through rep repetition involves a combination of the mind and the body together. Uh, I read several years back a story about American baseball players in Japan struggling to deal with some traditional Japanese expectations for ball players. It is common, for example, that when, a, when an infielder makes an error during the game, uh, that infielder, by virtue of having made an error, has demonstrated that he needs some uh, discipline. And he'll be called out the next day with coaches to field ground balls, a thousand ground balls the next day, in order to polish the Kokoro, in order to enhance learning through f uh, focusing con concentration and training the body. So the, pol the process of polishing the Kokoro, the process of acquiring discipline is crucial uh, to, the, to the maturing person because in polishing the Kokoro, one learns how to manage key. You got to have discipline and without, and without the discipline, you're going to be unable to fulfill the relation, your, your obligations to other people. To not de develop such discipline is in a way to become what Japanese see as the stereotypic American. The American, remember, Americans' individualism is about maximizing self-interest, maximizing satisfaction, maximizing pleasure. Then we know that we're progressing. Well, in a Japanese case, that maximization of self-interest is the root of all negativity in life. So the maturing person is one who, is under, who understands discipline. The maturing person also is one who understands obligations. Obligations in particular and fundamentally to one's parents. I have sometimes uh, had a, a Korean graduate student speak in this class, and he stands up in front of large numbers of people and says without blinking an eye, my main goal in life is to honor and serve my parents. Indeed, when he finished his PhD, uh, I served on his PhD committee, we had to reschedule everything and organize the entire process, adapt the whole dissertation completion process around the, uh, the visit of his mother from Korea so she could attend the, the ceremonies and uh, participate in the processes because that to him was far more important than his relationship to us, his committee members. In a Japanese context, um, the obligation to one's parents is the foundation for all rewarding relationships. You have an obligation by virtue of your position in the household. Your, your fundamental orientation as a person is to others, not to oneself. You gain acceptance through fulfilling those obligations. If you're unable to, to fulfill your obligations to your parents, then clearly you are somehow unfit in general. Uh, even if you're fulfilling obligations to others. It's the relationship between the child and the parent that's fundamental. The parents will take care of you as, ch as children. They will, they will take responsibility for helping you polish the kokoro, manage key, develop discipline. But as you get older and move into adulthood and you move into the position of leadership in the household, 
and they move into elite status, it is your responsibility to take care of them, to take to uh, prepare them uh, and support them during their uh, as elders in the in the household in the family. So, obligation to others, uh, based especially in parents, is then a fundamental piece of being a uh, a mature Japanese person. In class, a student raised his hand and said, uh, you know, I visited Japan and I really, I had a really direct experience of this, of this relationship here. He said, these people are very trusting of one another. Indeed, I was, I was um, paying, getting on the subway and I'm standing in line in order to uh, buy a subway ticket and I saw um, a pile of money sitting beside the, beside, um, where, you know, where you get your ticket. And there's a long line of people, and no one touched this money. He said it was the equivalent of about $40 just sitting there. And, uh, and nobody picked it up until finally someone came running back and got it. In another case, he said, I saw a, um, someone uh, drop something, and a, Jap and a Japanese person pick up and race after the person on the, on the subway uh, platform to get to this person before she got into, into the subway to make sure she got back what, she, what belonged to her. Uh, the point is that he said there was this great trust among Japanese people. And I, I encouraged him in class to think about the word trust and try substituting the word obligation, which to us feel like synonyms but have a significant difference. Trust is something that occurs between individuals who are autonomous and distinct. And you may not... Um, trust is something that it's, it's at issue. It's a question. Will, will we develop a trusting relationship or will we not? Uh, obligation is a property of people, a property of beings. It is a, is a definition. It is a requirement. And, and so in, in the Japanese context, it's, it's not that so much that tr people trust one another. It is that they accept their ob the obligations they have to one another. 